Welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast with your host, Funk Roberts. We are live. We are live. We are live, people. And welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast. This is episode number 71. And I am your host, Funk Roberts. I'm known around the world as the guy who gets men in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s into the best shape of their life, naturally boost testosterone, lose weight, burn belly fat through our Over 40 Alpha method, which is six pillars, six pillars of health, six pillars meaning mindset, sleep, recovery, nutrition, workouts, and of course, supplementation. But today, this podcast is dedicated to men over 40 and helping you guys get in the best shape of your lives. And I'm so happy that you are here. Man, I'm excited about today's episode because today's episode, we have an extremely amazing guest. His name is Jeffrey Smith. And Jeffrey Smith is the founder and executive director of Protect Nature Now. We're going to talk about GMO, the health dangers of GMO, and everything you need to know about GMO. Because I know that you hear that word all the time, non-GMO, GMO, GMO, man. That's one of the things that I focus on with a lot of my products, well, all my products that that, that, that it relates to. And, but Sometimes you just don't know what it means. Like, what does genetically modified, you know, uh, uh, mean? What 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 does that mean? What is what is what is all of this non-GMO stuff? Why do we have to to focus on on GMO and the gene uh, and all of these things? So today we're gonna we're gonna break that down and not only have the man who knows the most about it, but we're gonna ask questions about um, what GMO is, why it's important, why it is important for us in our health and in the future for us to really focus on, um, you know, ensuring that the products and foods that we eat are non-GMO. But speaking of non-GMO, before we start, before I break down who this guy is and why we want to be listening to him, one of the non-GMO items that I have is my Lean Pro 30. And if you're watching this on uh, on video, you can see this is my grass-fed protein. A lot of people ask me a lot about Lean Pro 30. Why is this the, the, the leading industry leading protein. Why, you know, you take a lot of protein powders, you got, you get bloating or it tastes crappy or it doesn't mix well, or you have the protein parts and it just doesn't make you feel well. Or sometimes you end up gaining weight and that's what was happening to me. So a few years back, I actually created this from scratch. It is a New Zealand grass fed. So grass fed whey protein, of course it's non-GMO. That was really important for us. But I also added probiotic. The probiotic formula is called BC30, which uh, uh, accelerates uh, protein synthesis and also helps with digestion. Plus, it's lactose-free because I'm lactose intolerant. And this is whey protein, the highest quality protein. So you want to be using whey protein, but a lot of times the lactose, uh, you know, gets in the way, leaves you feeling crappy. So this is lactose free. I made sure of that stevia sweet. So there's no sugar, of course, non-GMO, soy free, gluten free, um, lactose free, as I mentioned. And of course, you know, one of the biggest things for protein powders is taste, right? Like we've got this in vanilla, we've got this in chocolate and the taste had to be amazing. And that is the number one thing that these guys love about this protein powder because it tastes great. And 93, so 28 gram scoop is how much you're going to get. 93% of that, 92% of that, sorry, is protein. So most protein powders, you're not getting that high quality protein amount of protein per scoop. The other, the other uh, seven is, uh, is, the, is the probiotic formula and the other one is the stevia. So this is amazing amazing sugar free this is something that you need to to get your hands on so go to funksupplementshop.com and uh, hit up lean pro 30 and uh, use podcast 10 to get your or funk 10 why don't you use funk 10 and get 10 percent off your lean pro 30 or if you live in the u.s and you just want to try it you just want to try lean pro 30 you can get a free seven day supply of lean pro 30 at freeproteinpowder.com that's freeproteinpowder.com if you live in the u.s i'll send it to you for free well you have to just pay for shipping and handling but Again, shipping and handling for a seven-day supply. And you should see, we fill it to the brim uh, with the seven-day supply. So um, please make sure that you hit that up and take advantage of that as well if you live in the U.S. So let's get to our, our guest. Our guest, like I mentioned before, his name is Jeffrey Smith. He's the founder and executive director director of the Protect Nature Now. He's an award-winning documentary film director, international bestseller, but he focuses on GMO and the health dangers of it. Um, he's, he's authored two global 
global bestsellers. You know, he's directed films. He's lectured over a thousand interviews. Um, you know, 1500, uh, trained 1500 speakers. So he has speakers underneath him who, who uh, advocate for him. He's organized over 10,000 grassroots advocates. But more importantly, he's the guy who knows the most about GMO and is, and, and, you know, how this can help us specifically um, with our health. And, uh, and and fitness and uh, the other thing is you can find uh, Jeffrey at livehealthybewell.com or responsibletechnology.org or protectnaturenow.com but we had an amazing conversation um you know i'm i'm literally 100% organic now after this conversation, like no if, ands, or buts about it. I was like, you know, 75%. Now it's 100%. No if, ands, or buts specifically as I get older. And you're going to find out why you want to be uh, focusing more on organic. You know, one of the things that I did with my program is I tell people, you know, just, just, change the foods first and then move to organic, right? Because organic sometimes can, can be perceived as being very, very expensive, but it's not specifically because it lasts longer. It's in the, in your, the, the benefits are, are much better than just, um, you know, going without organic foods. So, so check this out, listen up. I I'm, I'm so happy that you're here. Give us a five star. If you've learned anything, share this with anybody and uh, enjoy our, um, our podcast. We are live. We are live. We are live. And welcome again, guys, to the Over 40 Alpha podcast. I'm very, very excited today to have our guest who's going to talk about GMO and the health dangers of GMO. You guys hear me talk about that all the time. I'm sure you you hear it and read about it, you know, uh, in, in the media or on your supplements or what have you. But do you really know what GMO is? Do you really know how it affects us? Do you really know how important it is for us to actually know what it is? Well, you will today because we have Jeffrey Smith here, um, who's the leading spokesperson on GMO health dangers, founder and executive director of the Institute of Responsible Technology and Protect Nature Now. And this is a this is a guy who has done hundreds of thousands of lectures, best-selling um, author. He's directed films and really gets to the grassroots of what GMO is. So please guys, welcome and uh, uh, welcome our guest, Jeffrey Smith. How are you doing, Jeffrey? Thank you, Funk, doing great. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy that you're here. So why don't you start off with uh, how you got into this? What is your background? Like, What makes you the expert in, in, in GMO? Well, when I started out and went to a lecture by a genetically, genetic engineer who blew the whistle on GMOs in 1996, I didn't know anything about it, nor did almost anyone in the United States. But this expert was aware that the technology was not ready for prime time, and yet it was about to be introduced throughout the food supply. Mm -hmm. He warned of potential allergens and toxins and new diseases and nutritional problems. And yet Monsanto that was pioneering this was genetically engineering crops to be sprayed with their Roundup because their Roundup herbicide was going off patent in mm -hmm. 2000. And they didn't want to lose this massive empire of selling this herbicide. So they genetically engineered soy and corn and cotton and later, you know, canola and sugar beets and alfalfa to be sprayed with Roundup and not die. So it gave farmers an easy way of weeding their fields. But the Roundup got absorbed into the crops that we eat. The, the genetic structure was changed because of genetic engineering, which created all sorts of massive collateral damage. And no one was paying attention in the food supply. No one was paying attention outdoors, where once you release GMOs into the environment, it self-propagates and contaminates the gene pool forever. And I figured this was an A-plus concern, so I would lend a little effort to get the word out 25 years ago. And since then, I've spoken in 45 countries and have two books and five movies and trained 1,500 people and organized over 10,000 activists and got the word out about the health dangers, but not everyone still knows about the dangers both of GMOs and the Roundup, which together is a very poisonous cocktail in my opinion. Well, a little effort, eh? thousands of lectures, <laughs> movies, bestsellers, uh, training people, that's a little effort? Well, it's well it, it sort of snowballed <laughs> as you know how things are, folks. Absolutely. So let's first, okay, let's step, a, step back and explain to people what GMOs are, like exactly what they are and what that means. Okay, originally we would just say that genes came from one organism and forced into the DNA of other organisms. So 
So bacterial or viral genes were put into soybeans. Now they can do gene editing, another form of creating genetically modified organisms where they can just eliminate a gene or change the, the, the sequence within the gene without introducing new genetic material both are prone to side effects. Both can have hundreds or thousands of mutations up and down the DNA. Both can have higher levels or new toxins or allergens or carcinogens. And not only theoretically, but we actually see it. They don't do much studies for GMOs. And a lot of people think, oh, it's proven safe. But that's only if you haven't been paying attention. The, per the person who is responsible for making the policy at the FDA claimed that the agency was not aware of any information showing that GMOs were different or dangerous, and therefore no safety testing was needed, no labeling was needed, and companies like Monsanto could determine if their foods are safe and put it on the market without even telling the FDA. It turns out that person, Michael Taylor, in charge of FDA policy, was Monsanto's former attorney, and later Monsanto's vice president, and later U.S. Food Czar. So it, it, when we got the documents made public from a lawsuit, we realized that it was all a lie. It was all a fraud. The overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the FDA was exactly the opposite as listed in the policy. The GMOs were different, dangerous, needed to be tested, and they weren't. Now, the similar thing happened with Roundup. Another set of trials showing that Roundup, according to the juries, contributed to the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma of the plaintiffs. More than $2 billion was, was awarded. We saw the documents from the EPA that approves Roundup and saw there again, Monsanto's lapdogs working on behalf of the corporation, ignoring evidence and really putting the entire country at risk in order to satisfy their handlers. So we see that these regulatory agencies have been captured leaving us to make decisions on our own for our health and not simply saying, well, if it's approved, it must be safe. That's not true. Right. So GMO, genetically modified organisms. Right. And so these are foods that are, uh, well, in, in the case of a regular person, like a, a guy in their 40s, 50s, 60s, looking to, to eat healthy, looking to, you know, for foods that are going to help their hormones, why is GMO or non-GMO food so important to that person? All right, so I'm gonna share some information that if people haven't heard about it, it's like, whoa, I'm not sure if that's true. But having been hearing testimonies from doctors and people all over the world, it's so obvious to me now. If we look at, and we'll start with the weakest, but the most, awe and jaw-dropping information. If you look at about 30 different diseases in the, in the United States, they're rising. Autism, deaths from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and, and leukemia, deaths from obesity, deaths from uh, intestinal infection, IBD, um, uh, high blood pressure, insomnia, suicides, anxiety, all these things. They rise in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and Roundup sprayed on the GMOs. Mm. Now that's correlational. And some of the correlations are extremely high, but you can't prove anything. But we, I, we now understand that when people stop eating GMOs and mm. the Roundup sprayed on the GMOs, as well as other aspects of non-organic food, they get better from these or similar conditions. I surveyed 150 audiences, including two dozen at medical conferences. So they were doctors speaking about thousands of patients. Mm. And I said, what actually gets better when you or your patient switch to a non-GMO and largely organic diet? Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. People would say something and say, okay, how many others noticed it? Yeah, digestive problems off the charts, mm -hmm. fatigue, brain fog, allergies, weight problems, anxiety, all these things were very, very highly prevalent. And then down to skin conditions and kidney problems, high blood pressure, infertility. So I surveyed 3,256 people and they in also, got better from 28 different conditions with digestive disorders, 85%. Mm. Then same as the, as the hand showing in these lectures, then comes uh, fatigue and weight problems and brain fog and allergies and sensitivity and anxiety and depression. And then we're still above 50% of the people claiming improvements in these areas and not just small improvements, 
mostly significant improvements. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the animal feeding studies, when you force fed animals, GMOs or Roundup, they suffer from these same diseases or their precursors. And now we can break down the modes of action, how GMOs and particularly Roundup, because there's more research, disables the foundation of our health. I'm sure you have talked about the microbiome on this uh, on this podcast. 100%. The microbiome is all important. 80% of chronic diseases, according to experts, have their source in the in the messing up, that's the technical term, of the microbiome. Well, Roundup's chief, chief poison is glyphosate, and it's patented as an antibiotic. When you look at what it does to the human gut bacteria, it selectively kills the beneficials, not right. the pathogens. It can create leaky gut. It can block the ability to absorb minerals, mm -hmm. because that's what it does. It's a chelator. It hugs minerals. It was originally patented as a chelator to descale industrial boilers and pipes of chem of of uh, mineral buildup. It also messes up the mitochondria. Now we know why fatigue and brain fog are so prevalent. It actually destroys the mitochondria. You can see it in a microscope. It can damage the ability of the body to create serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine, all extremely important. Now we know why insomnia and other sleep disorders and pain and anxiety and depression and Parkinson's are now correlated. We can see that it also messes up the hormone. The balance of estrogen and testosterone are damaged. It's, it's basically another hormone that regulates that conversion, and that is challenged and, and interfered with by glyphosate. And I'm just getting started. Yeah. The International uh, Agency for Research on Cancer determined that glyphosate is a probable human carcinogen. And what's even more car carcinogenic is the full roundup formulation because glyphosate's just one of the many poisons there's other poisons in there that are a thousand times more toxic but the epa doesn't look at that because they just believe monsanto and they say oh don't look at that just look at the active ingredient even though no one ever uses just the active ingredient the roundup can be 125 times more toxic so the key here is that when people switch <clears throat> to organic so they're avoiding both gmos and roundup Mm -hmm. They feel it. They get better and chronic conditions can go away. I have this in a movie called Secret Ingredients where actual people are switched to organic and you can see the changes. And then the doctors describe these are not just one offs. This happens every day in my practice. Well, wow, that's amazing. You, you just thrown a lot of things that a lot of these guys hear, a lot of people hear, and there's a lot of science behind that. Um, so, and there were a lot of terms that I'm sure a lot of these guys don't, didn't get. So I'm just going to highlight the microbiome, which is in the gut. We talk about that all the time, that being, that being damaged or that not being strong, again, leads to some of the things that, uh, leaky gut and all the things that, uh, uh, Jeff was talking about. Um, you know, you talked about the hormones, obviously that's a big one for us, right? Because as we get older, testosterone naturally decreases one to two, one to two percent every year at the age of 30. So by the time we're 40, testosterone levels are super low, but of course the foods that we're eating, the lifestyle that we lead obviously will decrease that testosterone. So now you're trying to get, you know, we're trying to increase T levels, decrease estrogen, get that balance with other hormones, but if you're eating things like, uh, you know, GMO foods or and, and uh, round foods that have been sprayed, it's sprayed with Roundup or or chemically, right? Okay, um, then then you're you're still behind the eight ball because you still could be eating healthy, healthy. You still be getting foods that are under that. Okay, this is pretty healthy, but there's still that layer, that last layer, the the GMO layer that we have to take out. So, I mean, you, you know, all these things that you were saying is kind of like aha moments are coming in because once again um you know we want us we want to eat healthy and when you switch from a complete disastrous nutritional plan to okay now i'm going to eat healthy now i'm going to eat you know potatoes and and meat and 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 fruits and vegetables and that sort of thing and kind of take that first step to getting rid of all the other stuff now we got this good food but now there's not an extra layer because where is that food being grown where is that food being engineered where is that food being made and that could be that last step that if you got rid of a lot of that stuff man you know your your health will will uh, uh you know increase immensely right and let's talk about some of the practical steps because 
Um, not everyone knows where what no. GMOs are out there, but it's not just GMOs, and we'll explain. <laughs> There's first of all, let me make it easy. Yeah. Eating organic eliminates products that are contain GMOs mm -hmm. and that are sprayed with Roundup. Sometimes there's some contamination, but it's usually small. Okay. So in terms of the GMOs, there's the soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, and alfalfa are the six major ones grown on millions of acres. Right. They're all Roundup ready. Some of them also produce a toxic insecticide, which can poke holes in human cells in laboratories, but that's how it kills insects. It pokes holes in the insect cells. You don't want to be eating that. So right. avoid the genetically engineered corn in the United States for sure. So those are the six major ones, soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, and alfalfa. Then you have six others. You have Hawaiian papaya, yep. zucchini, yellow squash. You have apples and potatoes that are engineered not to turn brown when sliced, very dangerous for a whole right. other reason. And then you have a pink papaya, I mean, a pink pineapple, which just came on the market. And soon we may have salmon. And if the salmon is sold in the supermarket, it's supposed to be labeled. So they're going to try and sell this genetically engineered salmon, which could have interesting hormones that you want to avoid through restaurants. So those are the GMOs. But animals in the United States eat feed made from genetically engineered soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, and alfalfa. Mm. So you want to avoid animals that have been eating GMOs because mm. that changes their physiology. Uh, it deprives them of minerals because again, the glyphosate is, is a chelator. It grabs onto minerals and hugs them tightly. So you end up with mineral deficient Roundup Ready crops. The animals that eat them are mineral deficient. We eat the mineral deficient animals and the crops and we have excess Roundup in our system, which further binds with our minerals, giving us mineral deficiency. Mm -hmm. And there's so many metabolic pathways that cannot function yes. without certain minerals. It's like the key to the ignition. Now, I've talked about Roundup, but I didn't say this, and this is really critical for choosing a healthy lifestyle. Roundup is now being sprayed, not just on GMOs, it's being sprayed right over the top just before harvest of grains and beans. So oats have more Roundup on them than GM soy. Why? Because three to five days before harvest, the farmers spray. It, it forces fast ripening. Mm -hmm. It kills the weeds for the next year. It dries down the crop, which can make it easier for harvesting and storage. And so they purposely kill it off the crop before they harvest it. But the amount of, of glyphosate in there is enormous. So if you're eating anything with oats that's not organic, it likely has a huge hit. Mm. Same with wheat, same with lentils, mung beans, uh, garbanzo beans, hummus, you know. Yeah. So these are the, the grains and beans, but it's also sprayed on orchards. So it's in, it's in orange juice, it's in wine. It's found throughout the food supply. At our, at our um, institute's website, responsibletechnology.org, you can actually take a look at all the data of all the different organizations, including ours, that have done tests on glyphosate levels in food. So this is, this is the practical step now, okay? Making it easy. Organic is the first choice. Mm -hmm. If you can't eat organic, Try to avoid one, the list of GMOs, and two, the list of those foods that are high in glyphosate. It is very difficult, and let's call it impossible, to eliminate all glyphosate because glyphosate, the chief poison in Roundup, is in the air. It is sprayed so much, it is in rain. So even your organic grains may have a small amount. What we need to do is minimize. And what people have found is that when people switch to organic, a whole host of things changes. So not just switching to organic, but start a diary right away, even before the switch. And here's the thing. You may have heard that eczema can get better or your weight can get better or your brain fog or your energy but you may not be paying attention to your gluten sensitivity or to your uh, uh, diarrhea or constipation or something else that's going on or your acid reflux or bloating. Mm -hmm. So write down every single symptom you have 
one to 10, and then make a little grid, one to 10 every day, but also your energy level. And because Roundup affects anxiety and mood and depression, your mood and your percentage of, of organic food at the top. Then you look and you see what's changed over a week, two weeks, three weeks. I talked to a physician. She said she put 5,000, 5,000 patients on an organic non-GMO diet, and mm-hmm. they all showed improvements. Mm-hmm. And she even said how long those improvements would take for anxiety and depression, for allergies and asthma, for digestive disorders, based on her population. I went to her offices and started interviewing her patients because I was a little skeptical totally. at the time. It was years ago before I had heard the incredible evidence from doctors clinics that have switched people to organic. At the same time, I went to her office, I went to farms that had taken pigs and cows off of GMO soy and corn and put them on non-GMO soy and corn, not organic, same foods, just not GMO or sprayed. Mm. And the health of the animals skyrocketed. I I spoke to one pig farmer. He said that within two days, an intractable diarrhea that he had unable to stop for two years that was killing piglets went away Mm. and he didn't even expect it. He just changed to non-GMO soy and a farm hand came up to him and said, you changed the feed. And my friend said, "Uh uh-oh, what happened? He said, no more diarrhea. Now on the farm, they talk about diarrhea. In the clinics I visited, it was irritable bowel. Humans, pigs, same result, switching to non-GMO, non-sprayed. And I've talked to someone who was sentenced to six pills a day for the rest of her life for irritable bowel. Six weeks later, no more pills. Someone else, three weeks later, no more pills. Speaking to them at the doctor's offices. So, you know, as I said at the beginning, this may seem astounding and jaw dropping, but I started interviewing people and audiences in 2006. So I've got 15 years and the science and, you know, my peer reviewed published surveys with over 3000 respondents. It's pretty solid evidence. Totally. Yeah. Um, so when I hear stuff like this, um, for me, because I'm, a you know, I have a a program that focuses, you know, one of the key focuses is increasing testosterone naturally. So when I, when I hear things like what you're saying on how, the testimonies and the case studies and the people literally, you know, changing and feeling better. It doesn't like it's draw jaw dropping at the number, but it's extremely believable to me because in my program, I, I can, I can say the same type of thing. You know, we've got thousands of guys who naturally increase testosterone, just changing these things to a healthy, healthy lifestyle. And it happens. And then it's not just the testosterone, it's everything else. It's, no more, um, you know, uh, blood, high blood pressure, cholesterol levels are great. All of these other things, energy levels, all of these things. So for me, so for you guys listening, like this, 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 this is extremely believable because when you look at the foods, when you look at um, just GMO in general, and, you know, I have to, uh, to uh, supplements that are non-GMO and I also switched to organic grass fed, all of those meats, grass fed meats, organic stuff as much as possible and see the difference even more, right? At 52, you know, like three years ago, I was just eating healthy. Now I'm, I'm switching more to organic and completely grass fed. And the difference is night and day, like organic chicken and regular chicken, excuse me, chicken from the, from, from the grocery store. Oh my God. It's like night and day. You know, when you open up a chicken pack, you know, the chicken package and, you you know, the from the grocery store and you put it, you cook the chicken and you throw the package into the garbage. And then three hours later, you open that garbage and the smell just takes like overtakes. you. It's like, Jesus, or get flipped to organic and you never get that smell. You never get that smell. And the last thing I just want to just add on is to think that when we eat foods, proteins, carbs, healthy fats, Um, we're eating the food for the micronutrients. Okay. Like everyone jumps on macros, macro, macro, but we eat the foods for the micronutrients of vitamins and minerals. The things that are also going to help us with our, our hormones, you know, magnesium and boron and selenium and all of these things. Now think about your food, whatever you're going to eat has now been um, 
deplenished of all of those micronutrients. So once again, the reason why you're eating the food is for the micronutrients. Yes, we need the proteins. Yes, we need the macros, but it is in fact the micronutrients. Now you're eating foods that don't even have any micronutrients in it at all. So you're not getting anything from it. It's crazy. And so, yeah, when you say all this stuff, it's exciting. It, it's exciting. And it's, and you also said one thing about, about you can't, you, listen, it's a, you're not going to get a hundred percent. Okay. You're not going to get to a hundred percent. It's about diminishing, right? Like just eliminating as much as possible. Uh, Cause you're going to see the differences, right? And so much is, the, is what you said. I want to unpack a couple of things. Sure. That smelly chicken brought me to a, <laughs> an interview with a, a, a farmer and his wife uh, in the Midwest. And she said, I have seen the carcasses of cows that were eating GMOs butchered and non-GMO fed cows butchered. Mm -hmm. And I will never feed my family the meat from the cows that were fed GMOs. I have smelled it. It is disgusting compared to the smell of the non-GMO fed. I have seen them discolored. She said, and she described it with such clarity. I don't think I need to go any further, <laughs> but she said, I won't feed that to my family. Right. And I've heard this before with people, you know, they don't send it out to slaughterhouses. They slaughter on farm. They look, oh my God. And that there's a there's a way that the rating of cows, they look 15 years older than they are if they've been eating the GMOs. And it's not, I mean, you also mentioned, and I'll tie this into the, the minerals, like there's cows, for example, whose calves are, are stillborn and they send the liver for testing and there's no detectable manganese. Now, the manganese level in the feed is supposed to be high, mm -hmm. but it's gone. It's not in the, it's not in the calf. It's hardly in the, the cow. And you realize that glyphosate binds with the manganese, making it unusable. Mm. Sometimes it doesn't even get into the crop because you can see the levels of, of, of minerals are very low that get into the crop. And then once the cows eat it, just like humans, it's also with the Roundup, which then binds with any other available. Mm. So you get stillborn, manganese is helpful to protect against allergies it creates sperm motility etc 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 and you can knock down the list of all of these you mentioned selenium you mentioned cobalt cobalt is deeply bound with glyphosate all of these right. are bound with glyphosate all of them are threatened and just to put it in clear perspective you can have all the components of a metabolic pathway sitting around like workers waiting for the foreman to show up. The foreman is the mineral. If the mineral doesn't happen, you have all the other components, but nothing starts. It can be a tiny amount of selenium or cobalt or manganese, but without that present in a usable form, you've just knocked out that metabolic pathway. And so we know some of the pathways. We know the pathways that allow the liver to detox, the cytochrome P450 enzymes. They're damaged because of glyphosate. We know that the detoxification within the individual cells, the NRF2s, those are damaged. Mm. We know that the, the metabolic pathways inside the microbes living in our gut that produce L-tryptophan and, and tyrosine and phenylalanine, those are shut down. We see, and the thing is, you can see inflammation and leaky gut happening in the gut, which can create leaky gut or leaky brain and inflammation in the brain. So one of my friends, Dr. Promutter, was in my last film, Secret Ingredients, who's in, he wrote the world, you know, the brain, grain, grain brain and brain maker. He talks about the link between glyphosate and autism and Alzheimer's and MS and Parkinson's is a straight line right. through the impact of glyphosate on the gut and also on the mitochondria. So it's, I, I can't emphasize enough that, and I think we have given enough inspiration for those that are open to trying a change mm -hmm. to do it. But those that feel like they can't afford it, Funk, I'm gonna give a little inspiration here. Is that okay? A hundred percent. All right. So I have talked to, and it's in my film, Secret Ingredients, that I did with Amy Hart. I have talked to um, families that no longer go to the doctors. Their kids don't get sick. They, I've talked to one family, not in the film. They reduced their annual 
uh, expense for, for uh, medical from 18,000 one year to 9,000 the next year to under 3,000 the next year to below the cost of, of just the cost of the, of the premiums. So I would say as the excuse to use, combine your health budget to your food budget. Just put them together for this experiment, but that's not all. Philanthropy budget. Some of us wait to the end of the year and decide to give a gift to some organization. When you contribute to organics, you're contributing to a healthy food supply, the health of the farmer, the health of the planet. And I hope we can talk a little bit before we finish about Protect Nature Now in terms of the health of the planet. So combine your philanthropy budget, combine your health budget, combine your food budget and say, yeah, I'm going to use this money wisely and contribute. I can afford it if I look at it through that lens. And then what may happen is happens all the time. Once you see the changes, you realize you can't afford to go back. In fact, in the movie Secret Ingredients, there are several doctors that I interviewed at a medical conference who said, so I put my patients on an organic diet and their autoimmune disease symptoms goes away and this goes away and this goes away. Then they cheat or they have dietary fatigue and they go back and then their symptoms come back and they needed to know that so that they become committed to the new diet. A hundred. Yeah, man, that, that's it's incredible. And and I say the same thing, you know, at first, um, you know, when, when you're changing from, you know, not even knowing what to eat, how to eat, maybe restricting yourself from eating properly to begin with. You, you need to learn the foods that are safe um, for you and, and your hormones and, you know, as we get older. And then once you get that, the next step, I mean, you know, is organic for, for me. That's that's how I teach it. I just say, listen, we got to we got to take baby steps. We're not going to wait too long to go organic, but we, you do need to make that switch. Like get rid of all of these foods first, get the right foods. In, and now let's go into the organic portion of it. Let's go grass fed. Yes, I preached that before, but sometimes that scares people away. So it's like, all right, let me just start you here. But we are going to get over here, right? We are going to get to this point because because now, you know, when guys first come in this program or guys who are listening, they start to get amazing results. They lose a lot of weight because they've completely changed their lifestyle. They're working out, their nutrition's better, their hydration, sleep. We do recovery stuff, you know, some, some supplementation. So of course you're going to lose weight. You're going to, you're going to get rid of all of that stuff. That's amazing. But 90 days, uh, you know, four months, five months, six months later, a lot of people hit that wall. They're like, okay, what's funk? You know, I still can't get rid of this belly. I still can't get rid of this, you know, what's happening. And I, I generally say, you know, it takes time because everyone's different. But one, one thing you can start to do is start to change the health of your food, go organic, because a lot of the belly fat and a lot of things that are happening there could be due to the microbiome, could be due to probiotics, uh, you know, just not having a healthy gut, there'd be, there'd be inflammation, little things that you don't think are going to make a big difference. Everyone looks at, at the big picture of nutrition or working out, working out, working out. And when you make these changes, because I made these changes, um, you know, specifically the meat that was the biggest thing for me the meat went i went from just whatever the meat to grass fed you know um um wild caught like everything was just um non gmo everything and my body you know got even leaner right even leaner my muscles even even more dense right because i'm getting the micronutrients i'm getting what i'm needing from the, those non genetically modified uh animals and um, it makes a massive difference. It makes a massive difference. And so um, I don't even know where I was going with that. But so yeah. I, to share, I was in Toronto. I, I'd spoken to one of the, the top world's top strength trainers. He had like 90 people in Olympics and, or no, actually hundreds of people who were either Olympic athletes or, or major league. And he actually did some research with his own people and put them on organic and then watched allergy levels go down, watched strength increase. So when I was in Toronto, um, he introduced me to one of his friends who was this massive strength guy. We went out to dinner and he said, yeah, worked for me. And he was describing how when he switched to organic, he got stronger. And when he coaches others, it's the same thing. So it would be interested. I'll, I'll suggest then, in addition to that, di that diary of percentage organic and energy levels, et cetera, mm -hmm. to put down if you're doing regular reps or, or, yeah. or working out or something, put those measurements in too. Totally. Be, be, do an experiment and see what else happens to change. It would be very interesting to find out. I love that. I love that. So let's move into, um, okay, so 
you have a website that has a list of the GMO foods and foods that to stay away from or foods to actually, you know, when you're buying it. So let's talk, okay, let's talk about shopping. We're going to shop now. All right. Now we're shopping where, you know, okay, great. I understand now Jeff and Funk, have, Jeffrey and Funk have taken me through this. And now I understand, okay, no GMO, grass fed, what have you. Where do I find this? What do I look for when I'm shopping? Um, what should I look out for? That's the okay. So the easiest thing is to look for the organic label, but let me explain the non-GMO project verification butterfly check. That says that there's little or no GMOs in the regularly produced product. They have an action threshold of 0.9%. And so if it's regularly above 0.9%, it won't get that check checklist. They only check for GMOs. They don't check for Roundup. So you can have non-GMO project verified oatmeal. Mm -hmm. There's no GMO oats. They don't, they don't exist. Mm. But the oats are sprayed with Roundup. So it's got the checklist, but it's full of the poison. Okay. Same with wheat, with bread. Now, with organic, you're not allowed to use GMOs, but sometimes there's contamination. Organic does not require testing for how much contamination has occurred. A non-GMO project does require testing if you're using any at-risk ingredients. So if you see a product that says organic and non-GMO project verified, that's actually better than just organic because okay. not only is it not allowed to use GMOs, yeah. they've actually tested it if there's any at-risk ingredients. If you can't, if you have to choose between organic and non-GMO project, organic is better because that's not just not allowed to use GMOs, you don't have, you're not allowed to use Roundup, Atrazine, hundreds of other dangerous chemicals which are on the rise, 2,4-D, dicamba stuff, you don't want to be putting in your body. Now, if you can't get organic, look for the non-GMO project yeah. sign, but then look and see if there's any of those ingredients that typically have high amounts of Roundup residues. For that, go to, go to responsibletechnology.org. Okay. We have an interactive database. The US government tests for all of these residues for all the other herbicides because they're so friendly with Monsanto, they decided not yeah. to test for glyphosate. So independent organizations, nonprofits like ours, we do our own tests. I've pulled all of the different data together from the US and Canada onto a searchable um, site. And then you can look at the actual raw ingredients, the fruits, vegetables, and grains, and the brand names as well. So then you, once you go through that a few times and based on your category of what you like to eat, yes. then you say, okay, I can eat that non-organic. It won't have GMOs, it won't have Roundup and I can afford it and it's available and I'll go for it. Nice. Still organic is better, yeah. but you get to choose. Now you'll also go to responsibletechnology.org and find out which are the GMOs. Now I told you there's only 12 in terms of the fruits, in terms of the fruits and vegetables. Oh. What I didn't tell you was <laughs> that when you open the can or a packaged product, nine out of 10 times, it's gonna contain a derivative. For example, sugar. 55% or so of the sugar in the United States doesn't come from cane, it comes from sugar, beets. Sugar beets, 100% in the United States are genetically engineered. Soybean oil, genetically engineered. Canola oil, you're in Canada, oh my God, canola yeah. oil's everywhere. Totally. Uh, it was actually a brand name, canola <laughs> yes. oil, the CAM means Canadian. It was originally oilseed rape that was exposed to radiation for mutation uh, acceleration. Um, so cottonseed oil, corn oil, corn sugar, uh, high fructose corn syrup, soy protein isolate, those are all from GMOs unless it's organic or says non-GMO project verified. So that's another way to be able to use to eat processed foods if you're still into them, look for either organic or non-GMO project verified. All right, so that's, the, and then for meats, you said it, you know, yeah. you want to avoid the animals that have been eating GMOs mostly the grass fed is not eating the alfalfa grass which is genetically engineered in some cases i would love it if the grass fed companies would put down and no genetically engineered alfalfa allowed but they haven't yet we'll have to convince them <laughs> maybe in new zealand because that, that, <laughs> that, that's what that's where they do it yeah that's great i mean that uh institute of responsible technology i'll put the link there i'm looking at it right now and yeah this is uh this is great because uh once again 
you want to keep your, when we're talking nutrition, you want to keep your nutrition tight, right? When, you know, I always tell, uh, say, you know, pick your go-to carbs, your go-to proteins, your go-to healthy fats. That way, you know, you're not trying to uh, complicate things. Like, you know, for me, it's steel cut oats, uh, you know, maybe cream of wheat, depending on what the, where the cream of wheat is coming from. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, sweet potato, um, you know, rice, you know, basmati rice, like it's, it's very, very simple, right? So now if you have four or five go-to carbs or you have three or four meats that you always eat, now you can really streamline that and find the organic versions of all of that stuff, right? And no, okay, well, it's going to take me about a week to figure out, you know, I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to look, okay, this is, okay, this is the brand that now I'm going to use all the time for my steel, my oats, or maybe, you know, my rice, because this is the one that fits under all of the things that you talked about. And now that makes everything even much more easier because now you know the brands, you in and out of the store in 10 minutes because you know exactly what you want. Um, you have your go-to food, so you're not veering too much and uh, you're keeping everything healthy and organic. And that's that's really key when it comes to, you know, shopping and, and, and uh, making sure that you're getting the right foods. You know, you mentioned oats. That reminds me of, a lect of an interview I did with, the director of Azure Standard that sends uh, organic food around the United States direct. And uh, he had calculated that his family eats organic for about $2 a person per meal. And I was like, whoa, tell us how to do it. Yeah. And he, he described something which the mathematics is obvious, but it, I missed it. He said, if you buy a, ba a bag of conventional oats, it'll cost you blank. If you buy a bag of, of organic oats, it's gonna cost you many dollars more, right? right? But if you calculate how much you use per meal it's a it's like 25 40 cents more and that is affordable right. and that is and once you buy a 20 if you're if you're a steel cut oats guy yeah. and you you know if you find a discount i mean a big bag you're yeah. going to end up paying less per per um portion if you buy a big bag a 25 pound bag of organic than if you buy the conventional in a little box so for those that you know, in the process of transforming, doing a little research is actually going to pay itself back. Totally. Because some people, when they switch to organic and they do it right, they actually pay the same or even less than what they were spending before. Totally. And the other thing is that if you're eating processed foods and you switch to ingredients that you prepare for or that are healthier, that switch from processed to more ingredients is also going to reduce your budget as well as give greater health. So I love what you're doing. Um, I think, you know, you and I, if we both had, if we both had a client that we were coaching, you might say, make these changes and then orga or go organic. I might say, go organic and then make these changes. <laughs> I, whatever they want, yeah, but yeah. We, we have our own angles. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, after, but after having you on this, on this uh, podcast, you know, I'm definitely going to switch to the go organic first because my goal is to help these guys get in the best shape of their lives, but also it's a lifestyle. It's not like, you know, my, my, you know, I've got 24 phases, which is 24 months of programming. So I've got guys in my membership that I've been in here for two years plus, and it's become a lifestyle. So in order for me to really, truly, cause I live this organic lifestyle pretty much. So in order for me to coach this and for me to help these guys transition from horrible lifestyle to hormonal based, you know, alpha, you know, male testosterone, organic, rip, ripped abs, shredded at 40, 50, 60, 70. It's got to start from the, from the get go. So even me now, I'm going to change the way I coach. I'm going to change the way I teach. Um, it's organic from, from day one, you know, make those changes now. Um, because if you're eating crappy foods, if you're buying McDonald's or Burger King or stopping off at Subway, because, you know, you haven't been, uh, you weren't prepared, then you're spending way more money do you know, eating out all the time than you would eating at home and organic. Like if we haven't even talked about the, you know, like if you go from eating out all the time to organic, you're saving way more money. Way you know, it's interesting. Healthier. I'm going to give you a, a one ex advantage of doing it that way, Funk, yeah. is that 60 percent of the 3,256 people that I surveyed said that their energy level improved. They overcame fatigue about 50 something percent, 2 percent, I think, uh, cleared up in brain fog. Mm -hmm. So if you have a program where you're asking people to engage in new habits and they now have more energy and less brain fog, 
they're going to be more successful in doing the rest of the program. 100%. So I would be very interested to see the, the results because I'm really into looking at actual results and seeing what happens. So to see if that, if that uh, approach gives uh, greater compl uh, compliance and success. 100%. Yeah, it's, not, it's literally I'm, I'm rewriting the nutrition guides this weekend. So yes, that's going to be number one in there. It's amazing. Okay, let's finish off with some some uh, things you want to talk about in regards to nature in regards to the globe, right? To, to All right. Yeah. So I've traveled around the world, as I've mentioned, speaking about the health dangers. I've interviewed dozens and dozens of scientists and doctors spoken. I had the honor of introducing the health dangers of GMOs and Roundup to the medical community, inspiring tens of thousands of physicians to prescribe organic and non-GMO. And we have 51% of Americans that now believe that GMO foods are not safe, 48% worldwide. And that, was, that has been my focus. I pioneered the messaging on the health dangers. I wrote the world's best-selling book on it, Seeds of Deception. And it's been my focus for 25 years. And <clears throat> I pivoted recently because of an existential threat posed by the new technology of genetic engineering called gene editing. And so even though I speak, as you know, on GMO dangers and health dangers, yeah. there's now something which is mission critical for all of us. We talked about the microbiome, and I'm going to assume that everyone knows a lot about it. But just for those that don't, the, the little guys, the microbes inside us, the microbes in the soil are essential. They are they carry a programming. They create the nutrients. You know, a simple concept is if you take fecal matter from one healthy human being or animal and put it into another, you can eliminate disease because there's some kind of programming that happens in the microbiome. And in a, for those that are more geeks, you could say, well, humans only have 22,000 genes, less than an earthworm, but we get to use the 3.5 million genes of the microbiome living inside of us. So we have actually outsourced 90% of our daily function to the microbiome. And let's just stop it there by saying the microbiome is really important for human health and the environment. However, let's say you genetically engineer a microbe and you release it. We didn't need a pandemic to know that they can travel the globe and mutate and infect. Most people don't realize that microbes also hold swap meets. They exchange genetic material with other microbial species. And there's a trillion microbial species, approximately. So now you genetically engineer one microbe and you release it. And now it's in ecosystems all over the world with a type of gene alteration that did not co-evolve with other microbes or their hosts, did not actually co-evolve with the microbes living inside us. And you can disturb that ecosystem causing damage or even ecosystem collapse. And even well-meaning genetically engineered microbial changes can be cataclysmic. In the film at protectnaturenow.com, my shortest film is also my latest, is called Don't Let the Gene Out of the Bottle, 16 Minutes. It shows one genetically engineered bacterium that was two weeks away from being released. And the scientist that I interview explains why it could have ended terrestrial plant life on the planet. Wow. A second one, almost released, could have altered weather patterns in the atmosphere. And then also the gain of function research, scientists genetically engineered a H5N1 avian flu, 24 times more deadly than the COVID-19 virus, mm. and made it airborne. It usually is very hard to catch, they made it airborne. So if it escaped, it could wreak havoc like never before. So we have put together a campaign called Protect Nature Now at protectnaturenow.com to stop two things, the gain of function enhancement of pathogens, which if they escaped could cause new pandemics, duh. And right. then second, no release of genetically engineered microbes because if you change the nature of nature and start messing with this delicate balanced ecosystem mm -hmm. you can't track it you can't recall it it's permanent and it could be catastrophic now on top of this there's two things that are important to know funk one is you can create a gene edited microbe 
with a do-it-yourself kit on Amazon for $169. If you buy, if you've got a biohacker kit for one to 2000, you can actually decide for the price of dinner, create new microbes, name them after your friends and release them into the environment. There's corporations with robots being driven by artificial intelligence in huge arrays, creating new combinations. Uh, we had chemistry sets when we grew up. Now yep. they're going to have CRISPR kits, high school classes, biology classes. They're going to be creating these things, flush it down the toilet. It's an ecosystem release. We can expect millions of genetically engineered microbes released into the environment if we don't stop it. And the regulation is almost entirely abdication. They don't pay attention. They say, go for it. We're looking the other way. So the fact is that because gene editing is so accessible, because it's so dangerous, especially in the area of microbes, because there's no government oversight, and because a few, let alone a million, GM microbes could cause catastrophes, if not cataclysms, we are starting a new global movement called Protect Nature Now. So I want to encourage your listeners, at, you know, after they've gotten their diet in, in shape, you know, this is something we can all do immediately we can all do before we leave our desks before we go out today watch the 16 minute film don't let the gene out of the bottle everyone tells me it's jaw dropping it's an alarm bell it's true then go to the advocacy platform put your address and in, in and your all of your elected officials show up mm. whether in the us canada australia uk eu all of your elected officials show up and our current campaign today it's a white paper with, a, uh, with an article, next it'll be a different white paper or a different film. Click and send it or customize the note. We've reached thousands of members of Congress and other in parliaments, and many are now interested in working with us. You can also click and send the press release to, to members, to local and regional press in your area. Mm -hmm. So now you are helping to inform. And then before you get off the page, go to the donation tab and make a monthly donation. $5, $10, $25, whatever you can afford. Mm -hmm. That way we can spend the money with confidence, knowing it's coming each month and mm -hmm. open up offices in Brussels, in Southeast Asia, in South America. We can work with international treaties. This is an existential threat. Everyone needs to know that we have arrived at an inevitable time in human history where we can redirect the streams of evolution for all time irreversibly. And the little guys, the microbe, are the most important kingdoms to protect. And they're the easiest to genetically engineer. So this is now critical. And the good news is the pandemic, a silver lining of the pandemic, is that it has alerted everyone to the fact that microbes can wreak havoc it opens the receptor cells of the human population. It gives the political will to the elected officials. And we believe we can win. We believe we can lock it down. And there's examples of other dangerous technologies that are locked down. This needs to be put into that category. No outdoor release. Very well said, very well taken. And uh, the, the last thing you said is this pandemic uh, has opened up the, hopefully, opened up the the mind of everyone to see what is possible. I know that, you know, microbiologists have been talking about COVID or COVID-like pandemics being uh, inevitable if we don't do things or don't get money to, to, to you know, in, the, in, in, the, in science and what have you many, 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 many years ago. And now this is what they said was going to happen and it's happened. And now when other things like what you just said, come on, protect our globe. What is protect, it? Na protect nature now protect nature now.com yes protect nature now.com we have a chance to to shut something down that could be again uh catastrophic um you know because yeah i mean it can change things forever which is what this has shown us this is going to change the world forever and so we need to uh take take our power and, and stop these things. So I think that's great. Um, thank you so much, Jeffrey, for being on this podcast. Where can people find you? What are some of the, I will put the links, uh, but again, let people know where people can find you, you know, what that call to action is. And um, yeah, we'll make sure that everyone starts to, to work. Okay, here we go. 
Live Healthy Be Well is my podcast. LiveHealthyBeWell.com has the movie secret ingredients that we've been talking about in terms of changing uh, health because of organic. It has a 90 day lifestyle upgrade, which is just focused on how to be organic. It doesn't have all that that bells and whistles that you provide in terms of what to eat. It's how to switch to organic, uh, you know, cheaply and quickly. It has a um, healing from GMOs and Roundup uh, course as well. Um, but but you know, you may want to sign up for the for the podcast. Yeah. Then uh, responsibletechnology.org, responsibletechnology.org. That's where you. That's the mothership uh, nonprofit uh, site. It's got the, you know, how to avoid Roundup, how to avoid GMOs, and lots of data. And then protectnaturenow.com, which is all about protecting the microbiome from genetically engineered microbes. And we also have a Facebook page at the, for the Institute for Responsible Technology. I do live Facebooks once a week. And we have, you know, a lively community. And the thing is, what I'm excited about, Funk, is you've got some powerful people following you. You've got some, you've got some alpha leaders. Mm -hmm. You've got some people that say, okay, I see it. I'm going to do it. And, and you're, it's like, I can tell from your energy that <laughs> the people who are with you, mm -hmm. they're like leaning forward in their life. They're like ready to do what's needed. And I am hoping that some of the people listening step into our community to protect nature now and become an alpha leader in that because that's who we need so thank you for being a bridge between this knowledge and some of the amazing people who are listening and watching oh yes our alpha brothers are, are definitely going to stand up for this one I, you know um specifically because after they've changed themselves and they're trying to change the fa their family members you know i always talk about you have to be an alpha in your community and in the world it's not just about the kingdom which is number one but now you've got to be an alpha uh you know in your community what can you do in your community to to be a leader um and that and this is one of the things that we can do so thank you so much for being on this podcast for all those links i'm going to do that 90 day uh that 90 day organic thing i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to sign up for that so that i can make sure i'm taking the right steps or i have taken the right steps and there's no holes uh you know and nothing unturned so thank you so much for being on this podcast and uh, again, we will talk to you soon. Thank you, Funk. Safe eating, everyone.